morning children and welcome to yet another session of Sunday school. I hope you'll all enjoyed your holidays. In today's lesson, we will be learning about two of Jesus' disciples, that is Paul and Barnabas. Now Paul and Barnabas were good friends and great missionaries who brought the good news to new places around the Mediterranean Sea. Now before we begin with today's lesson, let's together look closely at the map and understand Paul and Barnabas' missionary journey. As we read through Acts chapter 13 and Acts chapter 14, I think it's very important to have a visual of what you're reading. It talks a lot about different places, different cities, and you know, most people don't know where these cities are at all. So it's very important to actually put a visual to it to see exactly where they are on the map. That way it helps you grasp exactly what's going on in the story. So down here is Israel, Lebanon. Okay, here's the Mediterranean Sea over here. And so this is Paul's first missionary journey. They figure this happened between 46 AD and 48 AD. And this is where they started. It's documented in Acts chapter 13 verses 3 and 4. The Antiochene church sponsors Paul and Barnabas' mission to Cyprus and Asia Minor. So they sail from this area over to Salamis, Cyprus. They go from Salamis over to Paphos. And this is where it is documented that Christianity is introduced into the upper echelons of Roman society in Acts chapter 13, verses 6 through 12. They go from Paphos and they sail over to Persia. And they go from Persia through Pamphylia into Antioch and Pisidia. Paul receives both favorable and unfavorable responses to his preaching. Acts chapter 13, verses 42 to 45. And they go from Antioch and Pisidia over to Iconium. This is where Paul and Barnabas' preaching provokes division among the people, and they are forced to flee. Acts chapter 14, verses 4 to 6. They go from Iconium down to Lystra. Paul heals a lame man, and the missionaries are believed to be pagan gods. And that is in Acts chapter 14, verses 8 to 12. So they go from Lystra over to Derbe. They preach the gospel and make many disciples in Derby. This is recorded in Acts chapter 14, the first half of verse 21. And then they backtrack and they basically go the same way they came. They go from Derby back to Lystra, up north to Iconium, west of Iconium to Antioch and Pisidia. They go through Pisidia and they go to Atalia and then from there they sail back over to Antioch in Syria. So yes, I believe it is important to put a visual behind what we are reading in Acts chapter 13 and Acts chapter 14. So children, you may have heard of the episode where the Hebrews worshipped the golden calf in the desert. So when Moses, their leader, was on the mountain encountering God and he got delayed to return back, the people went astray and made a golden calf and began to worship it, as if the calf was God. They offered it animal sacrifices, they sang songs and they even danced around it. When Moses finally came down from the mountain with the tablets of the Ten Commandments in his hand, he was very angry with the people. Now, why was Moses angry? Because sacrificial worship is offered only to God. And so Moses was very angry because the people were offering sacrifices to a calf. A calf made of gold. Now, do you think Moses would have been happy if the people had to offer sacrifices to him? No, never. Moses would have never allowed them to do that. So children, now let us see how the people in the early church made the same mistake and offered sacrifices to Saint Paul. 
long time ago, two of Jesus' disciples called Paul and Barnabas had become good friends. Together, they were teaching people about Jesus in the city of Antioch. It was the third largest city in the Roman Empire. One day, they both went to Asia Minor to preach about Jesus. After much praying, they set off for their journey. They reached a town called Lystra. People there believed in mythological gods of the Greeks. In Lystra, Paul and Barnabas visited many places to preach about Jesus. They came across a crippled beggar. They saw him listening to them, so they looked at him and said, Stand up. At once, the man stood up and walked. The people gathered their thought that Paul and Barnabas were gods in human form. They called them Hermes and Zeus, the messengers of God. When the local priests heard this, they brought an ox decorated with flower garlands to offer as a sacrifice to the two men. Paul and Barnabas were horrified. Paul said, What are you doing? We are not gods. We are humans like you. We have come here to spread the good news of the one true God who has made the sunshine, the flowers, the trees, and everything that we see around us. Barnabas then requested them to give up worshipping idols and worship Jesus. Though that angered the people of Lystra, many among them turned to Christianity. So we see, children, how the Holy Spirit led Paul and Barnabas for a particular mission to carry the gospel to the neighboring lands. The two of them set on a ship to travel to new lands to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. In Antioch, many of the Jews as well as many of the Gentiles were attracted to the message they heard and were ready to follow Paul and Barnabas. Large numbers were baptized, but soon people began to oppose this. So the two men left the city and moved on to other cities on the coastline. Now in Lystra, a strange thing happened. While Paul was preaching, he noticed a man lame from birth, listening to the message with great desire to become a follower. So Paul went up to him and in the name of Jesus, Paul asked the lame man to rise up to his feet. The man was healed. The people around were amazed and began to call Paul and Barnabas gods. They gave the names of their Greek gods to the apostles. One of their priests came with oxen and flowers to offer as gifts to the apostles. The people were getting ready to kill the oxen as sacrifices to Paul and Barnabas. Now children, can you imagine what Paul and Barnabas felt at that time? And can you guess what they did? Yes, neither Paul nor Barnabas liked being called gods. When Paul and Barnabas realized what the priest was about to do, they tore their clothes and ran into the middle of the crowd, shouting, Stop, stop! We ourselves are human beings just like you. We do not want you to worship us like you worship the Greek gods. We are here to turn you away from these idols. We believe in the one living God who made heaven, earth, sea and all that is in them. We believe in Jesus Christ. This is what Paul and Barnabas told the crowd. Some of the people got baptized and followed Paul and Barnabas. But others who were his enemies seized Paul, stoned him and dragged him out of the city leaving him there as dead. But Paul recovered and the two apostles continued their journey, happy to have suffered persecution for the sake of Jesus. So we see children 
how our two great missionaries Paul and Barnabas went out boldly to do great things in the name of Jesus because of which people admired them they were full of joy and peace in spite of having to suffer stoning and all the bad treatment from the people similarly Jesus too was full of joy and peace when he was ill treated and scourged by the soldiers So children let us now take a prayerful posture and quieten our hearts and quieten our minds as we listen to the word of God Acts chapter 14 verses 21 to 22 Paul and Barnabas preached the good news in their bay and won many disciples then they went back to Lystra to Iconium and on to Antioch in Pisidia they strengthened the believers and encouraged them to remain true to the faith we must pass through many troubles to enter the kingdom of god they taught the word of the lord thanks be to god now let us reflect on the word of god and understand it the two missionaries paul and barnabas returned to lystra and met the communities of baptized christians what did they say to them if we want to be great friends of jesus what must we be prepared for yes we must continue loving jesus when our friends make fun of us because we are honest and helpful are we prepared to do that is it difficult to bear pain for the sake of jesus would you like to imitate paul and barnabas speak to jesus and tell him your answers now let us pray to jesus for courage and strength to make little sacrifices so that more people would know and love jesus dear jesus when i think about the largeness of life i often feel small and unknown the task ahead hangs over me and i embrace anxiety jesus help me to be strong may your love abolish my fears give me the boldness to step forward in full courage for your glory we make this prayer in jesus' name amen So children let us sing a song on Paul's missionary journey Go let's go around the Mediterranean go let's go with the gospel and Paul go let's go all around the world tell everybody that Jesus is Lord On the road to Damascus Jesus alive never would be the same again once the scales had gone from his eyes go let's go around the mediterranean go let's go with the gospel and Paul go let's go all around the world telling everybody that Jesus is Lord Silas in prison chained up to the wall singing out their hearts with joy knowing Jesus was in control go let's go around the mediterranean go let's go with the gospel and Paul go let's go all around the world telling everybody that Jesus is Lord Out from Mount 
city York Spreading Jesus' word Four long journeys later He's in Rome and thousands of people have heard Shipwrecked, beaten, stoned and more Always carrying on Sharing Jesus everywhere Go round the Mediterranean Go, let's go with the Gospel and Paul Go, let's go all around the world Telling everybody that Jesus is Lord So children, how many of you have brothers or sisters who are altar servers? After they have served at the Eucharistic table, do they go to the sacristy with the card? Why? They get the signature of the priest and they get points. Why do they do their best to collect points? If they come to serve the first mass at 6.30 a.m., do they get extra points? Now, in a certain parish, there was this little boy, Joe, who decided to collect the most points in just two weeks. He would get up at 6.15 a.m. and after a quick wash, he would run to church in time to serve the 6.30 a.m. Mass. Those who serve the first Mass are given 10 points, 10 extra points. So in one week, he collected 60 points and at the end of the second week, he made a total of 120 points, beating his sister Joanne, who had a total of 19 points. Joanne would go on Thursdays and Sundays to serve Mass since she had holidays, and so she could spend some more time to love Jesus by assisting the priest at Mass. After Mass, she even helped the sacristan to collect the hymn books and close the windows. Joanne's card showed only 90 points. So here's the question. Which of these two children, Joe and Joanne, would you like to imitate and why? I'm sure most of you all must have chosen Joanne. Joanne who served the priest at the altar because she got closer to Jesus. She did not do it for points. She does what is good because it is good for her and not for a price. Similarly, children, Paul did not preach for fame or praise, but he proclaimed the good news because he loved Jesus and wanted to get closer to Jesus. So here's what we learned in today's class. We've seen how Paul and Barnabas did not like the people of Lystra who wanted to worship them as gods for making a lame man walk. Now Paul and Barnabas knew they had healed with the power of the Holy Spirit and they told the people that it was Jesus the Lord who is the one living God whom they worship and who heals. Now, on hearing this, the people were amazed by their great love for Jesus. So, this was all for today's class, children. I hope you all understood the lesson well. So, until next Sunday, take care, keep learning, stay blessed.